Welcome to Conversations with Karabo, and I'm your host, Karabo Baloye. And here we have conversations with different people from different walks of life, and they tell us about how they managed to build their careers. Today, I have a very special guest who needs absolutely no introduction, DJ Coach, aka DJ Tegeleke. <laughs> aka dj e wallet i'm hoping i'll get one by the end of this video <laughs> how are you i'm okay how are you i'm good i am so interested in all of those very unique names oh my god uh coach i okay let me start by my real names hopoto mutani born in limpopo beggars fort uh 27 years of age and yeah, I'm just a hustler, I'm a simple baby guy, then yeah, that's just about it. Then with my name's coach, I got it through playing soccer. I used to play soccer. So the team that I was playing for did not have a coach. So I was a striker and a coach at the same time. That's how I got my name. And Tekeleke, I used to be extremely big. Like, yo, quite big, hey? But I lost weight when I was like 11. And after that, I got thin, but they said I'll slowly recover, but I won't be as big as, you know. But now with the way I eat, I can see I'm going back there. So how did you become drastically thin? Uh, so I, I, I encountered a natural disease called Sibedi Baby. It's some petty disease. There's no cause. It just happens. So you poke a hole on your chest and you start losing weight. And then that's what happened. So my grandmother noticed on time and they took me to this other traditional healer. They cut me, you know, those scissors, put muti and whatnot. And from there I was healed. Yeah, I think maybe that's why I'm strong. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's very interesting. And I mean, I guess the e-wallet one doesn't need an explanation. Well... <laughs> <laughs> and I did want to ask, um, on your social media, when you post that, okay, whoever can guess the correct answer to this, whoever can do this, I'll send this much to you. Is, is that a marketing strategy? or? I think, I think it's a bit of both. But for me, it's giving back to my people because uh, I, I'm, I'm hooked up with hustlers naturally. And for the fact that I'm doing a competition and I'm saying comment first and you're able to comment first and win, you are a hustler to me and you deserve my money. So besides that, I'm giving back to the community because I don't have much time to do other things. But on the other hand, it's actually working for my music side. You know, I'm doing quite fair for starters. So yeah, it is driving traffic to my socials and whatnot. Correct, yes. And which would you consider to be the job that gives you your primary bread being a dj or trading <laughs> i would say uh, that is quite obvious uh, trading will forever be the best and the reason why i say that is because the market that i'm trading uh, uh, in or at or whatever it is it's worth six trillion usd a day yeah, you can stop counting. Yeah, so Monday to Friday, there's six trillion rotating daily. So, I mean, there is no better job than that. Even Christian Ronaldo, Messi, they don't even make that much. We, the market worth daily. And you just need to get 0.000000001% of it. Then you are a millionaire. So when did you start trading? Uh, I started in 2016. And That's it was not very long ago. Yeah, it was not. Wow. <laughs> and it was not a choice, trust me. Uh, people think that I started because it's something that I loved. I don't love it even now. I don't care about it. I do it because I have to do it. And I, I wouldn't say fortunately because I'm tired of it. But unfortunately, I got well known for it. And when I'm saying, when I say I'm a DJ now, it's like, but this guy is a trader. Mm. You know, I didn't, that's not what I wanted to be known mm. for, mm. but it is what it is, you know? So I started in 2016. Um, I was doing everything which has money involved. Trading, triple M, I was there. Wherever they say you're going to make money now, I'm there. 
Wow. Yeah. So trading was just one of those that worked for me. Fortunately, thank God for that. So are you good at trading? Because, you know, trading has this negative connotation to it. People attach negativity to it because not everyone does make money. So how were you able to actually make money consistently through these All years? right. You know, one thing I can tell you, which is a fact, um, when I wake up, I go to the balcony and I look at the environment that I'm at, you know, the beautiful houses, the fresh air that you breathe when you're on top. And I go to my social media and I look at the negative things that people say. I do a bit of research that these people are speaking from where. And most of them, it's Mamelodi, Kharankua, Sunnyside Flats, like it's Cassis. And I've also checked a couple of people that I know that are doing well. You know, I wouldn't mention their names, but I know they're doing well. And I've checked the difference between how they think and how those ones think. And not even today, I've had any negative thing from a person who has money about trading. It's always this ones who are still coming and hustling. So for me, it's more like I've seen what this thing has done for me. So why should I now care what Sbanibani from Samkasi has to say about what I do? I know what I have. I know where I come from. None of these people were there. So I wouldn't be bothered, right? But somebody who has not achieved what uh, they, they would literally point from trading, they wouldn't necessarily believe in it to that extent, and they're most likely to believe any negatives that come around. So for me, I've seen the best. I wouldn't care what, even if the president has to say it's a scam, I wouldn't care because that scam has changed my life. And what has he done to change my life? Nothing. Who are we living for? Nobody. We are living for ourselves, so that's why. So you would say that Forex or trading took you out of the hood? It definitely did. And it's also in the Bible, by the way. It's in the Bible? Correct. How, how so? Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1 to 6. Invest your money in foreign trade. One of these days you'll make a profit. When you make profit, invest your profit in several places because you can never know the kind of bad luck you might have in this world. You can Google wow. about it. Show me a script about school. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Touche. <laughs> exactly. So, so, yeah. How did you um, learn about trading in the environment that you were in? Because it's not an environment where you're exposed to that kind of information. Okay. Um, I would say, like I said, I'm a natural hustler. So, when I was still in varsity 2016, I had to do it. 2013... 14, 15, uh, 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 I was a third year student in 2015, but still doing first year, okay. meaning that I was failing every year. Mm. My parents thought I was passing. So 2016, because I told you're them still that, in school. yes, I told them that 2016 is my last year because it will be the fourth year, mm. meaning 2017 I'm graduating. So I knew that I had to do something before they find out about my biggest lie, because what they're going to do, they're going to summon me back home in Limbobo. So, 2016, I dedicated it for hustling. I was fixing computers, student computers. I would go on YouTube, learn how to fix a computer, fix your computer and charge you for it. You know, I was a hustler. You know, I would do a lot of things, music as well. But eventually, when I came across, across trading, I was like, this one is the one. You know, because it's in the Bible and there's like trillions of dollars on the market. So that's how I, I started. But the journey was quite dark. It was quite rough because I lost 15000 that I was supposed to use for my school fees. Wow. On the first attempt of trying to make wow. money. You see? You see? <laughs> you know? And for me, one of the reasons why I would never care about what somebody else would say about what I do is because I was alone up until a certain extent. So I've experienced all these things alone, and I don't need to prove it to anyone else. So after losing the money, I was like, you know what? Let me go back to this thing and try to learn. Because back then, I was claiming when I was attempting. Then I started doing research, internet, Google, YouTube. I started learning. At that time, I was in a relationship. 
right? A serious one with a beautiful lady who was not even my type according to what I could afford in life. I just assumed that I'm not good enough for her, but she loved me for who I was by then. Uh, but as you know, people get tired. So around October, she broke up with me because I had no future. I've always been saying I'm trading, but this thing is not working. And I would say that was my biggest push. So I worked 10 times, 10 times harder than I used to to prove it to her that I'm not a loser. Little did I not know was that I'm, I was actually doing it for myself. But by then I thought I was doing it to get back at her, you know. So I pushed and eventually by December 2016, I had like 100K from 1,000. But it was a journey with losses in between, you know, and nobody knew me by then. Yeah. I think that that's yeah. the part that a lot of people are looking at yeah. about trading, that you lose so much before you can gain anything sometimes. Yeah, that is true. Even now, I still lose. Just a few weeks back, back I lost a lot of money. You, you, it's, it's, it's business, man. I mean, you invest. If things don't go your way, you lose. You start a company. If you don't have clients, it's going to fall. It's like it's business. It has ups and downs. But for me, it's more like, okay, I lose a half a million, yes, but what have I made? I've definitely made more than that. So for me, it's not a train smash. As soon as I lose, I learn why I lost so that I can improve next time. Yeah, we grow as we make. So when did your um, interest in music begin? Uh, 2008. Music is my, my first love, my baby. 2008, I started with wedding songs. My uncle used to own sound equipment. I started with wedding songs, playing with him, you know. And 2011, 12, 2012, I had to stop because I was doing my trick. My parents said they don't want any distraction. Then I continued with it 2013. So from 2013 to 15, when I was in varsity, I've released four albums. Nobody knows about them. Nobody cared about them, you know. <laughs> and 2016, that's when I decided that, you know what, I, I quit. But I don't just quit because I failed, but I quit because I don't have money. I need to go out there, do something else. As soon as I have money, I'll come back. 2019, that's when I came back. I bought equipment for practicing the CDJs and everything. And that's when I realized the power of money. Because now, the people that I used to back in 2014, 15, 16 are now my friends. Why? Because I've built a brand. Now they know me. Whether you like it or not, you're going to know me. Because little kids are getting inspired by my story. They speak about me. Social media speaks. So one way or the other, they ended up knowing me and... We were friends after that. That is, that is the power of building your brand, you know. So, yeah, that's what happened. Mm. So, would you rather be known as a DJ? I, I would prefer being known as a DJ, honestly, because this thing, when people see me, they see Forex, it's really annoying because you, sometimes you meet a nice, beautiful lady, mm. you know, <laughs> you... You want to have, you know, fun, mm. and then the next thing she wants you to teach her how to trade. <laughs> I was going to ask you to teach me. That's the problem. I, I, I am a human as well. You go to the gig, you go to the club, you want to have fun. From the stress of trading, work, and other businesses, you meet a person, hey, coach, you inspire me. Thank you. How do you do it? Oh, my God. <laughs> I think that's the annoying part. Every time people see me, they see the market. Even at a funeral, we are crying, Joe. We are crying. They say, they open the app. They say, yeah, you see, I'm also trading. I think, yeah, I, I prefer people to know me for music and just have a little bit of timing for when do they speak about for it. You can't ask me about trading at the club. You can't ask me about trading when I'm on, an, um, I'm on a date. You can't ask me about trading when I'm at a funeral. If we're just chilling, then that's fine. But you must just look at the environment. That is the problem I have. Haven't you mm. thought of creating some kind of like um, platform where people can learn from you? Uh, we do have a platform, uh, but the problem with it is I no longer have as much time as 
I, I used to. So when you come to me, I'm just going to give you a lot of videos and a PDF. It's up to you what, whether, what you do with the information. But before, I used to take people step by step. But now, I've, I've got so much on my hands that I no longer have time for even myself. You know, so it, it, it's really difficult. Yeah. So I'd always say people have internet. You don't need me. You don't need anybody. Everything is there on the internet. Nobody taught me this thing. I taught myself, and then that's it. So you can do it on your own. Problem is, once people know you personally, they want that personal attachment. And once you want that from me, you will never make it. Because I want you to feel the pain of being alone. Because that's what's going to make you smart when you make your first 100,000. So I've noticed something on your Instagram. Yes. Um, you post these very goofy, unusual posts. What is the thought process behind that? What are those? Give me an example. Like, okay, um, recently I saw non Temudi or something like that. I don't understand. Like, okay, um, I think, oh, I get what you mean. Um, the moment you have a lot of followers on social media, the moment you have a blue tick verification that denotes that you are a public figure, Already people have certain expectations. They, the way you speak, the way you dress, they already put categories of how you should behave. Why? Because they are looking at other people who have blue ticks and followers. They live in a certain way. I'm one guy who is not governed by social media pressure. What you see me sitting on the stove, sitting in a weird manner, that is just who I am. And each and every person who is regarded as a public figure has that weird thing that they do, but they do it off camera because they don't want people to know their brand, you know. So now for me, it's more like fact remains, I don't need people to make money. I only need my phone in the market. So I don't care what people think, you understand? That's why I call a spade a spade. If you unfollow me, if you block me, I wouldn't care, honestly. And even if, as an artist, you no longer book me, trust me, I'll still drive the G-Wagon tomorrow because I've made my money with other words. So I'm, I'm living my life the best way I, I can. I'm doing the best that I could to be myself under any circumstance. That is why people, when they come to my profile and be like, what's wrong with this guy? There's nothing wrong with this guy. This guy is just being himself. You know, there's a saying that money uh, changes people, and it doesn't. It just enhances who you truly are. And I'm stupid. Money made it worse. So you can imagine, you can't do anything about it because I'm not going to do it. My managers always tell me, don't do this, don't say, I will say, hey, protect if you don't want to manage me. This is who I am, and I'm not going to compromise for anybody else. You know, so that's why. I think it's very important yeah. to stay true to your identity. All the time. That's because the only thing you have. An example that I would give is most celebrities are going through depression. They're going through a lot because they can't speak. You know, they can't express themselves. They are always forced to live a lavish, luxury life even when they can afford to do so. So now you don't have money, I will tell you that I know when you. But the nice thing about it is even though Ahona Zaka per se, I still have businesses that I'm running. There's hope. There's assets, you know. So I'm always trying my best, man. We used to watch your show. Go Gohaye. Which one? You had a show. A TV before, show? Oh, yes. Damn. And then after three episodes, <laughs> nothing. The show is no more. What happened to that? Ah. <laughs> Those people, okay. Uh, so, like I said, I'm one guy who's always myself under any uh, situation whatsoever. So, what happened with that was, these guys found us on YouTube. We're doing our own show on YouTube. They found us on YouTube. We're doing quite good numbers, 700, 800,000 views. That's quite a lot. They came to us and they said that, you know what, we like your content and we want to move you from YouTube to TV. And they do the, they're doing that through my manager at that time. So they were not speaking to me. And I'm like, okay, when my manager tells me about it, I'm like, okay, what's the deal? And then these guys say, 
uh, no, we're just going to move your show to TV and then you guys are going to be famous. And I'd be like, wait, wait, hold on. I don't want fame. You know, I'm well known, yes, because God chose it to be this way, but I'm not going to run after fame. If I'm going to be on TV, I can't be there on for free, you know. Then they said, okay, it's fine. Uh, we'll give you an offer. So they offered us a certain amount of uh, mo uh, money for sign-up. Like, we are signing that we are owning right to this show, and we're going to broadcast it on our channel. That was the first uh, one. Secondly, they said that per episode, we're going to give you a certain amount of money. And when I counted from episode 1 to 13, it was quite a good amount of money. So they said after each episode, we're going to pay you, excluding the sign-up uh, fee. And I'm like, okay, I'm here to make money. So if I'm being famous, because one thing I knew was Twitter was going to roast us. Because we are weird, I know that for sure. So it's, for me, it's more like, why should people swear at me? They swear at me, I'm getting paid, then that's fine. You know? So what happened was, we first agreed on the name. The name was FBK, uh, I think it was FBK Boys at that time, yes. FBK Boys, that's what we agreed on. We agreed on the name. Then the next thing, first red flag, was that they said, uh, let's say we had the meeting today. After two days, they said, no, we need to shoot the introductions. Okay, introductions make sense. In my head, I thought they're taking the, the raw content from YouTube because we had all the raw files. Then they came, they shot the introductions, and then the next thing they say, yeah, no, now you guys need to do something fun. You know, uh, let us go to Limpopo, where you come from, so we can shoot. I thought it was part of the introduction, but it was not. These guys were literally shooting episode one. They captured, they captured, they captured. After three days, we get a link. This is the episode one. Huh? Episode one, but it was not complete because it didn't have diaries. Then they said, yeah, we need to do diaries. And then I'm like, eh, so you guys are no longer taking the one from YouTube. They're like, yeah, we need to, to shoot as we move. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Then we shot the diaries. Episode one was completed. Then they said that we're going to air after two months. But the following week, I get a WhatsApp text from FBK students saying, hey, we see FBK millionaires on DSTV. I'm like, eh? I go on DSTV, I check. You are able to check future shows. And I'm like, it says Saturday at whatever, 8 p.m. or whatever. I'm like, ah, what's going on? I, text, I tell my manager, he calls the director. Director calls the CEO. We tell them that this is bullshit. We never agreed on FBK Millionaires. What nonsense is this? Because our fear was, once you say FBK Millionaires, people are going to expect luxury. They're going to expect boats, the fly machine, luxury hotels, and we are not about that. We are classy people who just have access to money, you know? After that, they said, no, we're going to change it. Uh, it was a mistake. We'll send an email to DSTV. They'll change it in like two days before the show ends. I think it was on a Tuesday. The show was airing on a Saturday. And we're waiting. Thursday, nothing changed. And at that time, we'll still continue shooting as we move, right? First episode airs, it became millionaires, and I'm like, okay, it's fine, it is what it is. Now, we start playing. When the first episode ends, now the second one is supposed to air next week, Saturday as well. During the week, my manager contacts them. We're still waiting for the first sign-up bonus payment. We haven't gotten it. We're still waiting for the payment for the first episode. So there's, there's two pending payments now. Okay, it's fine. They're saying, they're giving us stories. Hey, we'll pay, we'll pay, we'll pay, we'll pay. When we're busy with second episode, we realize that even the staff members at that time are not getting paid. You know, the, the company has stories internally. There's always stories. People are not getting paid. And we'll be like, hey, here we're not getting our money. Yeah. I tell my manager that if this continues, I'm not going to shoot. He says, you can't do that. It's going to damage your brand. And I'm like, if that's the case, then that's fine. Either way, I'm living my life. Second episode, third episode, when it finishes playing, I'm like, our people, the money, they're like, ah, no, 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 no. We will pay, we'll pay. And I tell my manager that fourth episode is the last one. After this one, if we're not getting a single payment, because now 
we have extra costs. When we were going to Limpopo, we were booking at a hotel for their crew members, pouring petrol for their crew members, buying food for their crew members. They said that we must make an invoice and keep the slips, and they will include it as a lump sum in the entire payment. We're still waiting for that. Fourth episode after playing, told my manager that we are not shooting anymore. We were supposed to do diaries for episode number five. So we have done them, but they, somehow they lost the audio. So we had to redo the diaries, not the content that was inside. And I was like, this is the right opportunity. I'm not shooting. They came to the estate three times in a row. I tell the securities, these people are thugs. Don't let them in. Then that's what happened. Then a week passed. Saturday, the show is supposed to air. Then they had to replace it, unfortunately. Immediately when the media catches it, what they are not doing is to take out a statement of what really transpired. That they fucking owe us money and we refuse to shoot because they owe us money and I'm not going to appear on TV for free. They said nothing. The media took the best route, which is FBK millionaires kicked off TV because of fake lifestyle. Wow. <laughs> Three years later, I'm still here faking the lifestyle. Wow. I must be the best faker, eh? So that's what happened. And they owe us money the, between us and them. That's why even if I swear at them on my live videos and whatnot, they will never, not even one time, send a lawyer to sue me because between us, they know the truth. Before they can sue me, they must pay me the money. Then sue me the money that they paid me. I'll pay them with... Well, I understand. But one thing I don't like is the route that the media took. You know, that we were kicked off TV. How, how many broke people are on TV? Every day. Why must be, we be the first to get kicked because we are broke? Didn't make sense. But anyways, people believe what they wanted to believe. And that's when I've realized that a lot of people actually looked up to us who were just not aware. You know? So, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, like us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Well, I'm glad that you're now doing another one. Yeah, current. I'm doing my own show. I've bought equipment uh, out of my own money, our own right. And... I'm not going back on TV because there is a lot of scripting that is unnecessary. Once with a reality show, you can script, but you script planning your day. I'm going to have lunch with Karabo. I'm going to do this with who and who. I'm going to trade. You know, that's how, how far the scripting can go. Not them wanting to hire prostitutes to make us look bad on national television. That's what they wanted to do for us. So what? that's... Yeah, trust me, the scripting was horrible. Wow. It was, the scripting was just to, to show people that these guys have no direction. And we want on television to inspire people, to say, hey, you look, we were born from nothing, now we're here. You know, that's the storyline, you know. But they wanted us to turn us into some fuck boys. Yes, we were just a bit, but they wanted to make it worse. On a national television. So, yeah, I was like, nah, this is not for us. That's not how I want to be famous. Well, I'm sorry about that. No, it's okay. But yeah. <laughs> at least now you can create your own narrative. Yeah, perfect. Now, now I can create a storyline that I want people to see. When I'm broke, I want to shoot my reality show so they can see that I'm broke. How I make money, I want them to see how I make money. So that there's no... Because it's a problem when you are watching a reality show and a person just vumbugas out of your feet and hey, I'm mama, mama, and I'm a millionaire, or I have this and that. How did you make the money? We want to see. If you're doing tenders, we want to see the the scenes. How did you make those tenders? You know? So that's what I'm trying to break with my reality show. I want to show how I make money. That is the difference between mine and others. I want to show luxury. I want to show the reality of how I honestly live my life. When I don't have money, I don't have money. But I still have assets and I'm going to recover. No matter what. Yes. Well, all the best uh, when it comes to that. Thank you. I really Thank think you. that you don't even need it. <laughs> you don't need <laughs> no, that. You're going to be fine. Trust me, I do. Really, I do. Really. <laughs> and I saw that you have a new baby coming up, an e healing um, app. Yes, correct. Yes, tell us more about that. All right, so what happened uh, was. Uh, there's this guy, Owen, 20, 21 year old. I used to work with him. Uh, he, he's, uh, he's, a, he's one of my students uh, in coding. So I used to work with him on other websites, a couple of small projects. I used to hire him. Owen, please do this for me and whatnot. 
So, obviously, that means I have his number. He has my personal number. One time I was browsing and I saw hike, hike this, hike this. Then I Googled and I found an app and I was like, what is going on here? Because it was quite interesting. And after that, I contacted him and he came back to me and I called him. He explained to me what hike is all about. And I'm like, look, man, uh, if you are looking for partners, I'm willing to invest in this project. And that's how it started. So after that, he came to me and said, look, man, I'm looking for uh, an investor who's going to help me push the app because I'm a student and I don't have time. So investor meaning offices, employees and whatnot. I'm like, no, look, man, I have resources. I might not have the capital needed, millions, but I have resources. I can get employees. I can get equipment. I can get office space. I can get all the necessary things to get us started. So that's how our partnership started. And I invested in Hike. So Hike is basically an e-hailing app. You're going to request from wherever to the next destination. We are trying to make sure that we are using the negatives we get from other apps to make ours the best. That is number one, to make it more local, not international. It's all based on South Africa and South Africans. Uh, safety is our best priority. There's more features. So once we launch the user app, we're going to have a 24-hour contact center. When you're going through something, we're just like a button away. We're not going to say, wait for an email the following day. As soon as we get something, we contact the police, emergency services. That's what we are trying to do. So because I've already done the 24-hour service on my, one of my companies. So I'll just outsource some of the employees to their new service. It won't be much of a train smash. But yeah, that's what Hike is all about. It's a new baby, South African. And Owen is the original and founder of it. I just come in as a partner to assist him. And yeah, along the way, we can have other partners. I just want this thing to grow as big as it's supposed to be. Is that something that we can download today, yes. right now? You can download it right now. It's available on the Play Store. But for now, we are still looking for drivers. So there's a lot of driver applications. We are busy processing them, accepting drivers, making sure they don't have criminal records, making sure they have never done any offenses and whatnot, just ensuring the safety measures for our passengers. So that's the stage that we're at. The user app is also available, but we're going to announce on our social medias when it goes live. For now, we're still taking in drivers and it's coming in good. Well, is there anything else? Well, you have a lot of things on your plate already. Is there anything else that you want to tell us about that's coming That I'm up? busy with. Mm -hmm. I've got a lot of things, man. Uh, but other businesses, they don't need social media. <laughs> so I don't need clients or people to know about them. It's just like my private investments and whatnot. So Hike is the main public one that I'm giving a chance right now. So any other business, yeah. We don't need to know about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much thank for you. gracing us with your presence yes. as an entrepreneur, as a, a pioneer. Yeah. Um, the fact that you started doing the whole Forex thing and a lot of people are still not jumping on the bandwagon. Yes. And you're still successful after these years. Yes. Kudos to you. Thank you so much. Thank and, you. by the way, before mm -hmm. I say bye, mm. you have songs out, actually. Yes. Yes. Wait, did you do a song with Master KG? I, I did. Okay. I did a song with Master KG in 2019, when he was trending for Jerusalem, you know. Yeah, I did a song with him, and it was featured in, in his album. Yes. So musically, I'm, I'm doing my best. Wow. Yeah. I see you have a new song out mm. with Lady Do as well. Oh, yes. Correct. Mm. I have a new song with Lady Do and I'm looking to drop more uh, with Big Zulu, uh, Soa Matrix, Toshi. You know, I think the biggest challenge is I'm trying to live my passion, which is music, but time doesn't allow me. You know, like even right now, after this... Uh, a, a, a session that we are having, I need to trade. 
after trading, I need to go back to the office. So time, my businesses are, are consuming most of my time from music. But I'm trying to balance the two, though. I'm, I'm really trying to balance the two. But it's not easy, though. But I'm doing my best. Okay. Yeah. Are you thinking of having an album anytime soon? I think in 2023, I'm going to drop an EP early. Yeah, that's when I'm going to feature the big names, Big Zool and whatnot. And... Yeah, many people, big names want to work with me. They've agreed. But the problem is on my side. I haven't made time for that. But yeah, early 2023, that's what I want to drop. And then I'll, I'll see how it goes. Yeah. Okay. And then I think if I get one of the biggest songs in the country, that's when I'm going to drop most of the things that I do. For as long as I haven't gotten to that stage, I'm going to continue doing what I do and give music 10 or 20% of my time. Yes. Well, you look like you're on the right track. Yes, the people that are coll collaborating with you, yeah. they're big names already. You're yes. on your way. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm friends with most celebrities, but off media. You know, we just talk there and there and whatnot. So we're going to work together, definitely. And that only happens because I've built my brand alone. So I would say to other upcoming artists, if it's not working for you now, try to make money. As soon as you have money, you make money, you're going to get my attention. You're going to get everybody's attention. You know, so that's how it works. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you as well for you're, having me. You're an inspiration to the whole country <laughs> as an entrepreneur, as a person who's willing to do things for the first time. Yes. You're paving the way for a lot of people, so especially much. people from Limpopo. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Perfect. Thank you so much. You, you're man. welcome to come back. <laughs> <laughs> this is your home. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> as soon as Hike grows bigger and other businesses, my music, I'm definitely going to come back. Thank you so uh, much. Thank you so much for having me. There you have it, guys. That's it for today between myself and DJ Coach. Thank you for joining us. Like, share, and subscribe. Conversations with Karabo. Good to go. Karabo Balai. From my heart to yours. All love.